Thank you, Mr. Taco. Mr. Altmaier, I see you're kind of ready to go here. The gentleman has given me so much to work with here uh, on community colleges, and then I'll transition into transportation, as the gentleman would like to do. Uh, I visited just yesterday the Community College of Allegheny County in, in, uh, outside of Pittsburgh. And they have an amazing fundraising campaign going on because Western Pennsylvanians, private industry, and the foundation community believes in the future of our country, and they believe in the future of community colleges. They have a $40 million fundraising campaign. They've already exceeded $30 million. And the discussion was all the wonderful things that are happening as a result of the innovations that are taking place at the community colleges, not just in western Pennsylvania, but across the country. We have energy resources in western Pennsylvania that are unique. And all the time we hear about employers saying that they have jobs available, but they can't find people who are trained to fill those spots. So being right on the cutting edge, the Community College of Allegheny County has almost two dozen new programs, new curriculums that they have established to train workers and retrain in some cases mm -hmm. to fill the new spots. Geologists, managers, people out there on the work sites, all types of ways through the natural gas industry, the nuclear industry, energy, research and development, what we were talking about earlier. And community colleges really do play a unique role in this because of their ability to partner with local businesses, to identify the need, to retrain workers who have lost their jobs through downsizing or changes in the workforce. It's an amazing resource for this country, and the president is right to put a focus on community colleges as part of our resurgence in this country. On uh, transportation, but Mr. Altman, if certainly. wait just a moment, now you've got me engaged in this, and you talked about your community college. We are going to be going to our community college in Fairfield, the Sassoon Community College, um, excuse me, the Solano Community College District, and we're going to take the work that was done by this Congress in 2010 when it brought the Pell Grants down into the community colleges. Previously, the Pell Grants were only available at the four-year college level. But now the community college students can also vie for the Pell Grants and the loan programs that have been significantly improved uh, back in 2010 before we lost the majority here so that we took back from the big Wall Street banks the student loan programs, reducing the interest rates, reducing the hassle for students, and making loans far cheaper and more available. And just this year, the president took one additional step under his authority and stretched out the payment mechanisms so that no student, excuse me, graduated student, who had taken out a loan need to pay more than 10 percent of their annual income to repay that loan. All of this is part of investing in the human capital, investing in the workers. I, I suspect the three of us can go on for a long time well, about education. You know, let me just mention this. Last I knew night, we could. <laughs> last night I spoke before the um, ERC, the Research Center at RPI, Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Um, well regarded in their development of the uh, scientists and technology uh, experts and engineers of the future. Their funding is primarily NSF, the National Science Foundation funding. There is a 5% increase in NSF in this budget, and rightfully so. What they're doing in this think tank is stretching the creative genius and the imagination of folks as it refers to in, and addresses lighting designs. Lighting designs that will be used in ways that are un unbelievably um, creative and constructive. And it's about creating the incubators of the future, the entrepreneurs of the future. It's about developing the professors that will train uh, students into the future. It is an infrastructure unbelievably sound, and it is NSF funded. And, you know, for people to say, well, you know, our best days are behind us, what I'm hearing tonight is that there's optimism, there's great optimism, there's a reason to be hopeful, there's a charge for us to be optimistic by investing in opportunity. There's the tools that America's base needs. They need these tools and how dare we not provide them. You know, rather than denouncing workers, earlier statements on the floor were denouncing workers. Instead of providing hope, training and retraining people in areas that will be their spe specific strength. We all have certain skill sets or have that potential for those skill sets. There's a passion that everyone has for certain types of work. Let's not denounce the worker. Let's 
insert the hope in the equation and provide for the again for the infrastructure human infrastructure required by this manufacturing base I'm Mr. Altmaier, let's take us to transportation because I was about to respond that while the lighting at Rensselaer is obviously good, it's California where the <laughs> light emitting diode, the LED, is actually being manufactured by a new startup company called Bridge Lux that's taking that technology and with a little bit of assistance going to be able to manufacture in America. However, controlling this for the next 20 minutes, we're going to move to transportation. Mr. Altmaier, why don't you get us going on transportation? The, our colleague, Mr. Tonka, earlier was talking about the Erie Canal and the foresight and the, the commitment that went in and, and just the unbelievable feat uh, that it took to accomplish that. And I was thinking, as the gentleman was speaking, about today and the debate that we're having in this country about transportation and infrastructure. And we are going to debate tomorrow and vote probably Thursday in this house on a very underfunded transportation bill that does not contain the same foresight that the gentleman was discussing occurred in New York. And I think about the debate that must have occurred in New York when the Erie Canal was proposed and the cost and the expense and the manpower and, and just the, the time commitment that was necessary. It's a seemingly impossible task. You think about the Intercontinental Railroad in the 1800s and what must the country's debate, the political debate, have been at that time? What must have been the debate in the 1940s and 50s when President Eisenhower finally got off the ground, the interstate highway system, and began connecting our roads in a way that we had never done before. And that's, the, that's what we're facing right now. We have a system of transportation in this country to move goods from point A to point B. Manufacturing, make it in America, what we were talking about. Well, if you make it in America, you have to have a way to move goods across the country. And we can do that in all kind of ways. We can do that on our waterways, through shipping, cargo, ships, but we also have barges in my neck of the woods in, in Pittsburgh. I have a system of locks and dams in the district I represent, six different locks and dams that average 85 years old. They were built to last 50. Two of them have been rated by the Army Corps of Engineers as an imminent threat of failure. That is a crisis of infrastructure and that's happening in similar ways all across the country. You look at our aviation system if you want to move goods by air. We have a an air traffic control system in this country that is still based in technology from the 1950s and this next-gen technology that is possible through satellite technology it is expensive but it's long overdue and it's a commitment we need to make in this country as they've made in other countries our competitors don't have the same bottlenecks that we do at their airport because they have more modern air traffic technology and then you get to our rail system we all understand the bottlenecks outside of chicago and other places in this country our lack of, of modern investment in our rail system but what we're going to be talking about this week in the house is our roads and bridges and a, and a highway system I spoke earlier about the President Eisenhower's vision with the interstate highway system and the way that this bill lacks that same vision because it underfunds that investment and it doesn't require or doesn't even incentivize products to be made in America and there are literally trillions of dollars of need in our transportation infrastructure certainly we don't have the ability to afford it all but I can't think of a better way to put American workers back to work, to put American jobs back in play in the manufacturing sector, to have a resurgence, a regeneration of our manufacturing sector than through our transportation infrastructure. And I just, uh, I'm very disappointed at the lost opportunity that the bill we're debating presents because there are so many ways American workers can win, American manufacturers can win, and most importantly, America could win. And we're, we're missing that opportunity. But through the discussion that we're having today, maybe we can move this country in a different direction. Well, thank you, Mr. Altmaier, for uh, getting us started. And I've got to compliment you on the really neat.